Hello everyone, how you guys doing? Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day. Today we are here with a Blast Furnace Guide for Old School RuneScape and my endless adventure to make as many guides as possible. Hopefully you guys enjoy. If you do, make sure to leave a like. On top of that, we've got plenty of places you can check me and the community out down below and I'd appreciate that greatly. But with that said, let's go ahead and get into the guide. So to start, why should you do Blast Furnace in the first place? For a lot of people, it can be a great way to make money, especially early to med game in Old School RuneScape. It's also really good to great XP depending on how you want to go about it. Most bars here are going to be pretty good XP and net you a lot of money while gold bars are going to be the best XP by a long shot but they do cost a little bit of GP so you can either go the route of getting good money or you can go the route of getting great XP and essentially it's a choose your own adventure both with great results. And the main attraction to Blast Furnace is the fact that it requires half the amount of coal compared to smelting this in a furnace. In addition to that, it's also much quicker than smelting through a furnace. So for those two reasons, that's why you'd want to come here. And keep in mind that going forward that you'll need a lot less coal than you may think given the smithing instructions through the level guide in game. For the requirements, you're going to need Giant Dwarf at least started to be able to enter the Keldegrim area. You're also going to need 72 to 87k per hour in terms of coins to be able to use the Blast Furnace worlds 87k is required if you have below 60 smithing and in addition to that you're going to need a cooling method to cool off your bars once they are done you can either use ice gloves or buckets of water ice gloves are highly highly recommended if you're going to be here for a while buckets of water can be a bit more annoying but you can choose whichever in addition to that other useful items here we have the graceful outfit and in addition to that the coal bag the graceful outfit can be obtained after 260 marks of grace are traded in and that allows you to have more run energy over time and the coal bag allows you to store an inventory worth of coal and that requires 100 gold nuggets from motherload mine very very useful would highly recommend the coal bag especially if you're not doing gold bars and even if you're doing gold bars but we'll talk more about that later and then the levels required are up on screen now ranging anywhere from level 15 for iron to 85 for rune the real good money can be made once you hit level 30 for steels so you can make money very early on and 40 smithing is required for gold which is the really really good xp that you can get for the xp per hour here you can see that iron actually is 80k xp per hour the second highest of the list that's because it costs money you don't make any money doing that but that is a decent low level option beyond that you have gold at 330k and steel mithril addy and rune all linger between 50 to 60k with varying amounts of GP made per hour with those methods. The GP per hours are listed down below. As you can tell with iron, it does require a good amount of GP, 450k per hour, while gold is 1.1 mil per hour, but that is certainly a good amount of money to pay for the great amount of XP you'll be getting, so it's worthwhile if you have a lot of money to spend. Beyond that, steel nets you 520k per hour, while mithril gets up to 600k, adding up to 620, and then finally rune is 810k per hour. So if you're doing a profitable method anywhere from 500k to 800k per hour is to be expected, and that's pretty good gp per hour when you're considering you're also getting up a skill if you want to go the iron and gold route and lose money on the way that's also very viable considering gold is an extremely fast way to level up that skill so paying 1.1 mil an hour is certainly worth it in my opinion so now that we got most of the baseline information out there let's head on over and talk about my inventory and my gear and then we'll talk about more of a meta method that is available later on so as far as where we're going to need to get to if this is your first time ever going to keldegrim essentially you're going to want to teleport to Camelot, which is right down there, run to the northwest a little bit, and then head up all the way to up here, where you can enter the Keldegrim entrance. Uh, you could also do that through the fairy ring code at DKS, enter on in there, go through this little area right here, and that'll send you over to the quest location where you can start it. From there, once you've gotten down there, then you can go ahead and head on down this trap door, and that will send you down to the Keldegrim location down below. The trap door is located in the Grand Exchange, so that's a very easily accessible location. Uh, just head to the northwest of that, and then you'll be on your way. Once you're down here, the Blast Furnace is very, very close by, just right up here to the northeast a good bit. Head on through this door and into the next few, and then you're going to want to go ahead and hop to a Blast Furnace world. One thing I forgot to mention is that if you have been to the Blast Furnace before, you can go ahead and just select the grouping activity of Blast Furnace and then teleport on over here and it will home teleport you right over here. So go ahead and head to the world switcher and then from there find yourself a Blast Furnace world. 
Now that we're down here, you'll see that there is a coffer up here with GP that will slowly be depleting. Um, essentially, you can load up your coffer right on over here, just put some coins in there, and then it will allow you to use the blast furnace. If you're below 60 smithing, you're also going to have to talk to the blast furnace foreman, go ahead and run through the chat dialogue with him, and then you'll end up being able to pay him, and you'll have to do that every 10 minutes if you're below level 60 smithing. But for my gear right here, I have a full graceful outfit other than the gloves, which I've replaced with ice gloves. In addition to that, I have a ring of Keros. This is useful if you're below 60 smithing. It'll cut the GP in half that you have to pay at the Blast Furnace Foreman. For the inventory, I have a coal bag. And also, if you're going to smith gold here, you're going to need the goldsmith gauntlets, which do require the Family Crest quest. So make sure to get that done. You can still smith gold without it. However, your XP per hour will be much, much less. And you're going to be paying an absurd amount of money, remember. So if you're paying that much money, Money, you want to get the best XP and that's going to be a huge huge upgrade. If you're on Runelight, I would recommend to go to the menu entry swamper plugin, then from there click the little tool icon and go down to bank deposit and then switch this to eat, wield, etc. And essentially if you do that, if you have the customizable shift click stuff on, then from there if I shift click my coal bag, it says empty right now, I can empty it and I can fill it from within the bank rather than having to leave the bank and then do it all that way. So it saves you a little bit of time, especially really nice here at the blast furnace where you're going to be banking endlessly. So to start my trips, unless I'm making gold, or I like to prime it a little bit just by throwing an inventory or two of coal into it. So I'll do so right now, just toss them on in, you won't be receiving anything. And then go to the bank, and from there, I would recommend just to put your two ores down here in your bank, and then from there, go ahead, withdraw whichever ore you need, and fill up your coal bag. Now you're going to have to keep within the ratios that the smithing icon says. So say for mithril here, you're going to have to take two trips of coal for every one mithril ore trip you do. With adamant, you're going to have to do three coal trips for every one adamant trip you do and for rune you're gonna have four cold trips for every one rune trip you do now of course if you have a coal bag that sort of makes things a little bit more complicated but i'm sure you'll figure it out then from there once you have the appropriate ores in there go ahead and collect from the bar dispenser down here if you have the ice gloves it will automatically be cooled off for you when you go to collect if not you're gonna have to use a bucket of water there is a bucket spawn over here along with a place to fill up your bucket if you'd like if you're gonna do that method i just buy a ton from the ge and then have them in your bank and bring one on each trip so it's very simple for this example with steel i just bring an inventory of iron along with an inventory of coal drop them on in there one by one and then head on over here and it's as easy as that a cool little 500 or so xp from the dispenser and a nice little bit of gp made as well if you're doing mithril start your trip with two inventories of coal so i just tossed in a full inventory along with a coal bag then from there head on back to the bank you can go ahead grab yourself a mithril ore also fill up your coal bag i'd recommend to have stamina potions up here as well you can have those and then if you have the shift click thing on as well you can do the drinking from the bank too which is very very useful but once you have an appropriate amount of coal in there then go ahead and throw your mithril ore on in throw your coal as well and now you'll have an extra bit of coal for your next inventory so the next inventory you can then go and do some mithril and some coal again basically with mithril for every trip of just coal you do you can do then two trips of mithril and coal and so on and so forth essentially just matching up your ores with the coal necessary if you're doing gold this does get a little bit complicated and i'm going to purposely make it a lot more complicated here in a second one thing i'd also recommend to do here is if you're going to have an item like goldsmith gauntlets or a coal bag in your inventory take the item out of your bank without a placeholder then go ahead and fill up your bank with bank slot fillers right there. And then whenever I go to deposit, say, an inventory of gold bars, I can just press deposit inventory and my goldsmith gauntlets will stay with me. So for gold, this is very simple. Just go ahead and throw on your goldsmith gauntlets at the beginning of your trip. Make sure you have them on all the time. If not, you're going to lose a little bit of XP here and there. Drop them on in and then switch to the ice gloves. Pick it up. And as you saw right there, 1.5k XP in as long as it took me just to run there and back. So that's why gold is so, so OP. Now there is a way to mix up gold with the profitable ores through the coal bag. And that's what we'll go ahead and talk about now. So the meta method involves you carrying an inventory of gold along with a coal bag, which inside the coal bag, you will have a lot of coal that you can then drop off for your profitable bars. This is essentially allowing you to take all of the trips of coal over there while you're already doing gold anyway. So it makes it that much more efficient for you. This is really good for Iron Man too, to speed up how many bars per hour you're making. And so for the mithril method, basically you would take an inventory of gold over there with the coal bag filled. And then after that, you would take an inventory of mithril over there with the coal bag filled. And that would be able to average out over time. And essentially you'll be doing half your runs with a profitable method and half of your runs with a good XP method. For adamant, you'll have to add in another trip of gold and coal to make that average out. So you'll be doing two trips of gold 
gold for every one trip of Addy. And then for Rune and gold, you're going to have to add another trip as well, so you'll be doing three trips of gold for every one trip of Rune. Overall, the XP per hour doing this method comes out to 200 to 265k, which is less than the gold method alone, but in terms of the GP per hour, you actually make money doing this method rather than losing the 1.1 mil per hour you would be losing if you just did nothing but gold. So this is a really, really good method. So we'll start with an inventory here to exemplify it. Again, make sure your goldsmith gauntlets are on whenever you go on over here and then deposit the coal from the coal bag afterwards. And this will start to add up while you're doing gold in the interim, taking the bars from the dispenser as is, and then going on for our second trip. Now I'm exemplifying an inventory of what Addy were to look like. Keep in mind that whenever you have your coal bag in this formation, um, essentially it's not going to take all the coal out. So whenever you bank, you're going to have to empty it and then refill it to make sure you get all of the coal in there. From there, trip two is exactly like the last one dump the coal on in with the goldsmith gauntlets on go ahead and retrieve from the bar dispenser and then from there on the next trip you can go ahead and bring out some adamant along with an inventory of coal and then you'll have two trips of gold and one trip of adamant definitely a great way to add in a little bit more profit into what would be a very very expensive method if you were just doing gold as is and overall you get the best of both worlds with that example it is a little bit more sweaty however i personally think it is quite worth it but that is going to be it as far as this blast furnace guide goes hopefully you guys enjoyed if you did make sure to leave a like on top of that got plenty of places you can check out the community and myself down below and i'd appreciate that greatly hopefully you enjoy it and if you want to see more videos like this as soon as i go live make sure to subscribe but with that said hopefully you have a wonderful day and uh can't i can't i can't wave i can't wave let me wave i can't wave i gotta i gotta run i gotta i gotta get out of here they're throwing snowballs at me all right all right before they get here peace